Hey everyone, I'm Chacha Sun, and I'm here to tell you about fatigue during menopause, something which uh, I'm pretty familiar with because I'm experiencing it myself all the time. And yesterday was just one of those days where I got in at about 10 p.m. at night, uh, ordered some dinner for my daughter on the way in, and then I uh, started to get her ready for camp the next day. We ended up uh, at about 12.30 at night going to sleep, uh, got up at six this morning and uh, took her laundry out of the dryer. We packed furiously and got her to school by 7.15. So, why are we all tired? We're all tired because of the stressors of life, because we're managing careers and children and partners and you know a lot of a lot of work that we have on a, a daily basis. So I'm just going to check uh, as well the sound, and hopefully that's working for for this. And okay, good. <laughs> So, you know, essentially the reason why we all have fatigue, you know, after age 40 is that our hormones are changing on a daily basis. We are essentially transitioning almost every day through one, from one cycle to the next. So this is my chart on hormone flex that explains why we're so tired. So on the... Uh, over here, you'll see a woman in her 20s who's not ovulating and who is ovulating. And then on this side, you'll see a woman in her 40s who's ovulating and not ovulating. So, you know, essentially what you're seeing is a really huge difference in terms of hormone flex. And the woman on the uh, left, the 20-something-year-old, she has you know, drastic changes when she's ovulating versus not ovulating. But the woman in her 40s is having a lot of fluctuation depending on, you know, uh, regardless of whether she's ovulating or not ovulating. And so what you can see here is that the fluctuation in hormones is really key and that's what's making us tired. So we are getting tired because the, uh, you know, the fluctuation in hormones is causing us to uh, feel up and down all the time. And that's regardless of whether we're ovulating or not ovulating. And as we all know, as women, some, it's the transitions often between states that can really promote fatigue. And of course, you know, getting a good night's sleep is really important and ensuring that we have a, a lot of supplements. So I thought I would share today, you know, kind of some of the things that I do in order to sleep well and adjust. And these are my own kind of like, you know, my own uh, personal remedies for combating fatigue. And you know, just with the caveat as always that I'm not a nat natural path nor a doctor. Uh, and however, I consult with the, you know, the best you know, doctors and um, menopause practitioners and uh, you know, in natural paths uh, in women's health. So I'm very lucky that I have at my fingertips all the information you know, available uh, to, you know, talk uh, about, you know, these supplements as well as to use them myself. So, so hormone flux is really, really inevitable as we're aging and it starts in our 40s and uh, we will essentially stop fluctuating once we hit menopause, then we go into decline. So it's like our hormones are fluctuating up in puberty stable for a while and then they fluctuate up and then go down and then we're, we're stable during menopause. So what that means is over a 10 year period, we essentially lose most of our female sex hormones and 75% uh, of our testosterone as well. 
because these are all produced by the ovaries. And that has huge implications for us as women because of course that is also going to contribute to fatigue uh, as well as lifestyle and, you know, and over time, uh, you know, the hormone flux will improve, but the hormone flux, you know, is a major contributing factor. So, so we're stressed out from daily life. We have hormone flux and we have overall hormone decline. And this is all happening at a time when quite uh, often women were at the peak of our careers and our children uh, often these days are young, uh, ranging to you know, being out of the house. Um, and so these are really, really, uh, I think, stressful times, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, for women. And um, I'm just getting email messages that people can't, uh, can't get onto our Facebook Live talks. So uh, hopefully they will, they will find it. Uh, and um, so what can women do? Well, I, I uh, let's see. So I personally, when I, uh, sorry about that, that was a wireless connection. When I'm really, really tired and I know I need to get a good night's sleep the next day, I will use a melatonin. And this is a quick dissolve sublingual one milligram melatonin. And uh, something that uh, I hear from a lot of women is they're using three milligrams. And the clinical trials have shown that one milligram is a you know a better dosage um, you know, for women for melatonin because melatonin won't help you stay asleep, but it will help you adjust your daily clock. Uh, in order for you to, you know, essentially, you know, fall asleep faster. So I try not to use melatonin too much um, so that I'm not dependent on it. But definitely there are days when I know that I've got a 12-hour day ahead of me and, you know, I'm restless. I haven't shut off the video. There are uh, lots of things I still have to do. And so I will try a melatonin. And, uh, you know, a lot of women ask me, you know, what is in your kitchen drawer? You know, what is in your medicine cabinet? What do you use? So um, I don't have any right now because I'm um, these days actually sleeping not too badly. But um, magnesium as well. Magnesium is very important uh, for bone health, for overall organ function, as well as for sleep. There's studies showing that essentially once you are magnesium depleted, then uh, you can definitely have problems sleeping. And they've given, they've given um, people magnesium as a daily supplement uh, versus placebo. And about this, this is in about 50 people. And they show that a daily supplement of magnesium did give uh, people, men and women, better sleep, uh, longer sleep and better sleep. And so, the other, the other um, supplement that I take that I really love is um, ashwagandha. And so this is essentially a stress adaptogen that um, helps uh, with balancing your stress hormones because I'm stressed all the time. So uh, ashwagandha really helps with adapting your stress hormones and uh and essentially as well because we're in hormonal flux and i'm just going to show you this slide again so just a reminder this woman on the left in her 20s is uh not ovulating and ovulating and this is a woman on her left who's not ovulating and ovulating. So essentially in our 40s, our hormones are going crazy, a lot more crazy than in our 20s. And those hormones also include the stress hormones uh, such as cortisol. So cortisol is a stress hormone and it's essentially produced by our adrenal glands 
and also you know leads to hot flashes you know so if you're kind of feeling hot all the time or having hot flashes cortisol is a key culprit and what's happening is our, our bodies just aren't doing the best job at adapting to all these changes in our hormones so we're feeling hot we're feeling cold mainly hot though uh, we're having trouble sleeping because our stress hormone is going at night and so you know over a you know course of a day our ovaries are just trying to kick up you know these uh, hormones uh, because over time they are declining so so essentially, you know, as women, I think, in, especially in our 40s, we really need to spend a lot more time on our personal health. We actually have to have a very active personal health routine. And we have to stop that sort of, you know, conditioning that we, you know, have basically developed over decades where we put everyone first, we put our kids first, we put our partners first, we put our company first, and we don't you know, take the time to understand what our needs are and, uh, and essentially you know, design our own programs. And, um, and so when it comes to our own programs, especially fatigue, you know, there's some basics that I think are important. You know, one is, just understanding the, uh, you know what are what's contributing to our fatigue i talk to a lot of um, mothers with young children and not having a bedtime routine for those children is leading to sleep problems for mom and those become chronic over time uh, i think we need our own way of you know of dosing with the supplements that we like and that we want uh, in order to maintain overall body health. Exercise is extremely important. We have to build in weight-bearing exercise you know, over time. Uh, if you talk to an orthopedic surgeon, as I did recently, and what his point was is you know, most people will not be calcium deficient, but um, the uh, key to maintaining good bone health is weight-bearing exercise. So he sees 30-year-old you know, top bicyclists who have osteoporosis because bicycling does not give us weight-bearing exercise. So that was, you know, good for me to know because I do a lot of spinning, which is good for cardiac, but not necessarily for osteoporosis. So as we age, we need more weight-bearing and resistance, and, uh, and that type of exercise, you know, will promote overall health. And as I was mentioning, you know, we can each, um, you know, choose to do what we um, want in terms of supplements. I myself personally um, really depend on uh, magnesium because most of us are magnesium deficient and it's really hard to get all the green leafy vegetables in our diet that we would like to. And then um, as well, I'm also these days uh, taking a, a mild iron supplement because I'm in perimenopause. So I'm having a lot of heavy bleeding uh, during my periods. And my daughter, who is 16, is also going through the same heavy bleeding. So we always have a very mild iron uh, supplement, you know, at home uh, for both of us. And of course, uh, heavy bleeding can lead to anemia, which the can lead to fatigue. So all these different factors uh, can lead to fatigue as we're aging. So that's um, my personal regimen. And if anyone has any questions, you know, please make some comments and we can turn this into a chat, uh, more of a chat about any questions or comments that you have on fatigue. All right, so that's it for now, and I'm going to be doing this every two weeks, just telling women out there what I'm doing for you know, all the changes in my body and in my mind as I'm aging, and, you know, and I always welcome hearing about what other women are doing as well. 
Uh, the sum of all of this is going to go into a workshop that I'm preparing uh, for November uh, in, uh, at a camp uh, called Camp Paramount in Malibu, in which I'll be talking to uh, lovely campers who uh, are joining us uh, for a life-changing three-day event. And so uh, look forward to all your comments. Thank you, everyone.